Hey you folks, so sorry, gonna apologize in advance. It's been a little while since I made a video. Um, backlogs, am I right? Uh, but anyway, I uh, I got something not not so interesting, but something that I've been putting off for a while, mostly because I just quite frankly haven't had the parts, but I finally, finally got all the parts today. I'm gonna reshell this Game Boy Advance SP. Now, normally I wouldn't make a video for something as uh, you know, reshelling a Game Boy Advance SP, but I'm making an exception for this one. I've been putting this off mostly because of all this custom wiring that I did. Reshelling this is not going to be easy without undoing all of this wiring. Now, unfortunately, that's just the hand I've been dealt if I want to fix this, and I do because, I mean, it's obviously got some issues. The hinges are cracking. Um, one of them is almost completely gone. The lid is cracking yet again. Um, yeah, it, it, it needs some help. I mean, you can hear it still works perfectly fine. And I can, you know, manhandle this. It's not going anywhere. Um, but, you know, it's, it's obviously going to get worse from here. So I want to fix it. And the thing that I've been waiting for, as far as parts go, to try and fix it, are, oh my god, how do I not have them? Okay, fine. Here's the assembled one. I made these cheap little PCBs, and I made them on uh, flex material just to make them extra thin. Um, they certainly don't need to flex, but I wanted as much clearance as possible, and I made two of them. Um, they're, oh, here they are. Go figure. I did have everything set aside. So all you need are the PCBs that I designed. They're they're super simple. Uh, I I'm sure I'm not the only one with something like this. The idea is I just have 12 solder pads connected up to each one of these pins, and then you solder on one of these flat flex cable connectors, and you literally just use a flat flex cable and just connect the two. These are all off the shelf parts, except for the PCBs, but the PCBs are so small that they're cheap enough to order from someone like Osh Park or whomever. I'll throw a link in the description to a GitHub repository that I have either already created or will be creating. Um, by the time this video goes up, there'll be a GitHub repository for the files for one of these if you wanna make one. Um, there's no specific purpose in mind. I just did uh, 12 pins because that seemed like the easiest thing to do. Uh, but with one caveat, you have to use both up connecting and down connecting uh, connectors if you're using one of these ribbon cables with the connectors on the same side. Otherwise, you have to use an opposite cable and then the same connectors. Um, the reason for that is otherwise these will be facing the same way the ribbon cable won't be twisted and the wiring will be backwards so pin 3 for instance will uh, correspond with pin 10 and so on so you get top left connects to top right top middle connects to top middle so on and so forth All the the pins are reversed whereas if you use one, uh, if you use the opposite connector, you know, a down facing and an up facing. I'm sorry, if this is confusing, I'll, I'll try and do a better write up in my GitHub repository. But if, if this doesn't, this isn't making sense to you, just, and you want to build one, just when you get one, make sure you actually check it with a multimeter and make sure that the pins are corresponding to what you think they are. Um, and you have to check it anyway to make sure there's no shorts, but. Anyway, this is hopefully the missing puzzle, um, missing piece of that puzzle. One of the pieces is going to go up here, right about here or so, on the inside, and then I solder all the wires on top to this instead, and then I can just run this ribbon cable through, and I can detach it if I need to. For instance, if I ever have to reshell this thing again, which probably might happen, but anyway. There aren't 12 wires, but I figured I'd put 12 pads on it and give myself space to expand. Uh, at the very least, I can always run a second one. Because, um, you know, built more than one. But anyway, 
that's the task. And here's the donor. I'm going to be putting this in this shell, which means I need to take this out of this shell. Um, and then this is going to go back in this shell. People were asking, no, the Lugia shell is not going anywhere. I really like it, so here's where we go. Uh, you'll have to forgive me if, um, obviously this hasn't happened yet, still as talkative as ever, but later on in the video you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little bit more quiet than usual. I, um, I just had some oral surgery, and while it is still healing nicely, I shouldn't be talking as much as I am, because that will only make it worse. But fuck it, I'm going to talk anyway. I can't help it. I don't know, put on some music or something. There is a uh, there's a point where I'm gonna have to pause the video because I do have to make modifications to this shell. Um, as much as I like the shell as is, uh, I, I've just made modifications to this SP that I need to account for, like this volume wheel and my headphone jack up here. But it's okay. It it'll work out. I soldered iron, aren't I? I don't remember if I soldered up the button for this. I think I did. I did. Take that off the ribbon. And I'll turn the soldering iron off for now because I'll, I'll put this back together later. It's not the focus of this video. I don't want these ribbons or these buttons, or membranes, excuse me. I was actually originally going to use a different shell, but I don't know, I'm kind of kind of digging the blue. I got some a uh, I got a um, another shell, a pink one that I thought would go good with the uh, stuff that I already have set up in that other SP, but The more I thought about it, I decided, eh, the pink LEDs might actually look better in a blue shell than a pink shell. So, here we are. save this for that build, that other build. So I need to get a hole for my uh, my thingy here, my headphone jack. And 
I'm trying to think of the easiest way to do this. Someone had recommended this to me in, uh, in the comments, I believe. And in hindsight, it does make a lot of sense. So I'm going to try it. I'm just going to screw this thing back together and try drilling a hole. You know, with a drill and a drill bit. Worst case scenario, I screw it up, then I'll use the pink shell anyway. I think that's all the screws we need. So we're working on this side. The other modifications on top, I won't need to cut this out because uh, this is an IPS ready shell, so it should already be good, even though I do have a little bit of a funky install here. Um, and I did originally cut this out, but I don't think... Mm, maybe I'll cut that again. I can always move this, it's not that big of a deal, but, I don't know, I'll have to put it together and try it out. First things first, I'm going to get this hole cut. So let me, let me get a straight edge. so I can mark this off. And I'm just going to mark it approximately because I know no matter what I do, the hole's going to be off center anyway. can't really mark that, can I? Mark to the sides. And uh, that should be good enough. Now I just need to go find a drill bit that is approximately five millimeters, but since I'm in America, I need one of these, because my drill bits aren't in millimeters. Anyway, I'll be back, I'm going to go drill this out. Talk amongst yourselves or something. Ah, the importance of work holding. I was doing so well, and then I slept with the Dremel and cut out way more than I needed to, so that's cool, I guess. Um, it's not terrible, but it's obviously not ideal. Anyway, I guess that's good enough, so let's keep going here. I will need to modify the bottom housing as well at some point, but I'll do that later. Neat, huh? Soon, trust me. <sighs> because I know I'm gonna get asked. That super card that I just pulled out of there, I do not recommend them at all. Literally the only reason I have it is because it came with something else that I bought. not good flashcards. 
not compared to the alternatives anyway. Also, before someone else asks, yes, these are machined copper. No, they are not available. They were made custom by a friend. If you want to get your own set, um, I believe he might start selling them eventually. But until then, sorry. Make friends with a machinist, I guess. Ooh, and here we go. So the question is, should I start at the bottom or should I start at the top? Oh, of course, everything just falls out. Okay. Nope, everything but the D-pad. Might as well get that now. Because there's a... Uh some custom wiring going on here. Let me see if I can scooch this. Okay. Get the rest of the shell taken apart at least. I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to to do this without having to redo this, you know what I'm saying? Like I want to be able to snip one wire at a time. I forgot I'm going to have to trim some of that too. Alright. Oh, and of course everything's sticking to that. I'm thinking it's probably easy. Oops, see, doodle, I just unplugged the screen. So for those that didn't see that original video, for context, this is a Game Boy Advance kit, not a Game Boy Advance SP kit. Um, I installed this before there were Game Boy Advance SP kits. I think leave that connected. I want to do these four wires. There's four wires for the headphone jack. Two wires for the um, battery mod. And then another three wires for the backlight kit. I think we'll do those three. Yeah, I, I just stole ground from the backlight kit. That seemed easier than having to run another wire. So... Let 
take one of these, unplug that. So this is going to go just twist it up the same way as this ribbon here. Let's do a dry run. That can, it's not fitting now because there's wires in there, but that'll work. I would like to get as much slack as possible though. I don't know if I need all that slack. All right, so let's plan to have this right here. Actually, I'm just gonna stick it down, fuck it. I can always move it if I need to. New flush cutters, highly recommended. Nice and sharp, look at that, look at that. No chips, oh, it's great. Stick the adhesive right underneath the connector. Right there for now. And we'll do the headphone jack last just because that's off to the side. We'll do this first. So let's put these on the far side. So I want to cut a length off this. A little bit of slack. And for these three pads, I'm going to use Two and three. Plenty of slack. Not quite how I was hoping that would end up. Okay, let's try again. There we go. Now the intention is to go down here on the flip side. Oh, I suppose I should do these wires on the back first. Um, 
those ones actually have enough slack, so I think it'll be okay. On the flip side, we can now solder this one. But I need to figure out where to put this. I was thinking it would go right on top. Originally I had planned to put it upside down because that would work. I think that would work better, but I don't think that's going to work here. So I need to route this down. And what pad did I use? I used pad number 12. Gonna be a pain in the butt to put together, but that's okay. It'll be easier than it was. All right. Rinse and repeat for uh, nine more wires, something like that. Rinse and repeat. Okay. Only blue wire I use. This one has a lot more slack on it.
Good lord. Give me a good joint. Ta da that's three done. Oh wait, no it's not. I haven't done the other side yet. wires to tuck away. That's okay. Someone had recommended I use, um, whatchamacallit, UV adhesive to, you know, stick these wires down. That would certainly be a good idea. Next, let's do, do this thing next so I can get those wires out from the bottom, the PCB. Don't have to route them funny, that's okay. Let's see if we can get away with doing this without having to desolder. Plenty long. This is the wrong tip for.
I don't know which one I did. Just tug on both, see which one comes. I guess it was that one. <laughs> Alright. If only there were a hole. Might just file a notch in this board. That would make wire routing easier. Or I could just drill a hole. Have to be right there. Nope. There's a trace on the other side. Hmm. That's what I did over here. I just filed a notch in the board. I think that's what I'll do right here too. Just trying to decide where. I think right up here is best. Don't do this at home. Or do. I'm not your mom. But if you do, it's not my fault if you fuck it up. into that trace on top. Didn't even touch that trace on bottom. We're good. Let me just route that up and around this way. Over and across just like that. But I think I'm actually going to come over and around underneath on this side. And I did Pin 9, I believe. Yep. Nice. Oops, should have left a little bit more slack on this side. Oh well. It'll work out. Nine. Then 
this wire I can route just up and around. Underneath. And there's one more. Look at that. Four left. Each one gets easier and easier. Alright, so I originally glued this down with hot glue. And clearly I'm going to have to reinforce that. Ideally a actual solution would be better, but okay. so if I cut this down here, plenty of slides. I think I'm going to use that unused pin pad number seven. come down here it's pretty easy to figure out which wire was cut just to route this up and around to right here I'm gonna have to be careful with the routing because otherwise it's gonna get pinched so get this nice and long I think that's Oops, I'm trying to cut my finger. Um, I think that's what I was missing for sure, that some UV adhesive for taming these wires. All said and done, I should still have three empty pads for whatever future mods I might want to do, which I do have one thing planned, but I don't think I'll have to use any of, I don't think I'll have to use this for that mod. of just doing it right the first time. Wouldn't have to do it twice.
All right, and the wire that I clearly just cut is this one, and that actually might not be long enough. Could always just solder to whatever this is supposed to solder to. That's probably not any easier. Screw it, let's try it. It was this one, right? Fiberglass scratch pin. A little bit of flux. Probably wasn't scratched enough. Oh, no, there we go. All right, all right. And that's even long enough. It's having to put a wire through another notch in the board. What was it, J4? Yep. I can always go back and shorten these wires. It's not too big a deal. Two more.
about this the same as that other one. Last one. Oh, I cut it just a hair too short. I can make it work. There's just going to be no slack on it. That's what I get for rushing. Check it out. This is completely detachable from this. And I didn't even have to cut a hole in the shell to get it that way. So yeah, that's obviously going to be a pain in the butt to uh, plug and unplug, but it's better than better than it was. While we're here, let's do one more mod. Um, I don't know, just for fun. Nothing complicated. already got the thing stripped down, already got the uh, iron heated up, so on and so forth. Some of you folk were real jazzed about the uh, LED mod I did on this one. And it's super easy to do. Just put your multimeter in diode check mode, and then if you put the black probe on ground, and red probe on the positive, you can light up an LED. So this way you can check which side is the ground and which side is the uh, positive. So in this case, the right side, this side, is the ground, the left side is the positive. easiest way to desolder these is um, quite destructive, but just get your iron on both sides. Do one of those. And those are sensitive to heat. I probably had that stuck to the iron way too long, but if I need to reuse it, it's there. It might still work. The replacement an 0603 LED. I have blue, green, and red. Blue obviously works just fine, but I'm not feeling that. Let's do... I just did blue and it's going in a blue shell, so... Let's see what else I have. I think this is the same thing. Blue, yellow, green, red, white. I could do white. That's actually what I'm leaning towards, but let's see, I think I still have plenty of pink. I'm going to do pink. Where are my tweezers? There they are. With 
LEDs, the, uh, you can usually tell the orientation by the markings on the bottom. If I recall correctly, this little T-shape means it's pointing towards the ground. Oh. Alright, looks like I need another LED. <laughs> I don't know where that went. I accidentally squeezed the tweezers too hard. Um, I swear that doesn't usually happen to me. No, I'm kidding. It happens all the time. I don't even know what I just did with that bag of LEDs. I was so stoked to install it. And of course my desk is a mess because of who I am as a person. Well, I'll put it with the rest of the LEDs. Okay. Oh, what the f- It's not in there. Seriously? Oh, here it is. So anyway, let's test this out. If it's pointing towards the ground, you should be able to light it by touching these two, and what do you know? Alright, so a lot of people get freaked out about installing surface mount parts, but quite frankly I think it's a lot easier than through hole parts. Uh, well, we're going to have to tin both pads. And I've already completely forgotten what the orientation of that is, and it's upside down. So I'm going to um, how what? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Good lord. So I'm pretty sure this is backwards. Oh nope. That's right. Okay, so the ground is now on my left. means we need to take this and make sure the arrow is pointing towards the far side and just tack that side down flip it around tack that side down And I'm going to do this first set again, because I don't think I actually tacked that down. There we go. And then I usually like to add a little bit of extra solder to the joints, mostly because there's flux in the solder, so usually helps to pretty up the joints. And then if all went well, you can test it out. Where's my other battery? There it is. Ta-da! All did go well. Which I fully expected, of course. I mean, nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> Alright, let's get this stupid thing assembled. So my screen assembly. What other modifications do I need to make? Oh my god, it's perfect. Oh, look at that. Alright, so I think the only thing I need to do is remove just a little bit of material up top here to make room for my lens. So I'm going to go do that. Let me mark off. What do I need to remove? Eh. It's easy enough to tell because it goes right up to the hole. Okay. I will be right back. I'm going to go cut this flush. BRB. Talk amongst yourselves. 
All right, so that went somewhat okay. Typical fashion, I took off too much material, but that's okay. I'm gonna spray out the uh, shavings, and we are all set. I gotta reinstall my foam, don't I? Oh man. Alright, for some reason I, I wasn't expecting it to fit. I don't know why I doubted myself. Uh, where are the screws? That would be these. Oh, the foam is crooked again, of course. Question is, is it worth fixing? I suppose so. I should just tape that foam down. I think it would save myself so much hassle. Slip that into the other side, actually. So I want that on top. Stick it to the edge of that and it'll 
stay in place. There we go. Wasn't I just saying something about doing it right the first time so you don't have to keep doing things over? <sighs> I suppose I should go back and tape that down. I mean, at this point, I guess it's not that big of a deal. We'll do it next time I open this thing, which I'm sure will be somewhat soon. tempted to leave that screw out. I don't like how that's fitting, but I don't know what it's rubbing on. I'm worried it's just going to crack again. Oh my goodness, is that ripped? Did I already rip that? Oh no, it's just kind of kinked. Okay, that's okay. Whew, that spooked me, man. these screws organized and then I accidentally dropped my screwdriver on them. favorite part. Okay, and then this needs to bend. Go in there. And somehow I just need to flatten that thing out. I think if we kink it that way, it should be good. I know, I know, buttons. I'm just trying to do a test fit. It's uh, not fitting. Not surprised. Disappointed, but not surprised. The problem is I can't have the two flat flex connectors on top of each other, so I need this one. I need to, oh, 
I need to take it apart again and use some adhesive, but I don't want to. I think I can make it work. I think I just need to get some adhesive handy. Aha! Oh, of course that's coming unplugged. Jesus. All right, so that goes there. Try and plug that in once again. I think my current issue right now is that I need to bend that stiffener. I think once I get that bent, everything should fit better. all that fussing loosen that again it's okay it's okay I'll make it work it'll be good That's in. It's just about to be in. And then that'll go in. Nice. It's folded pretty tightly, but Everything looks like it fits, which I am genuinely shocked on. Let's try, let's make sure everything still works. So that plugs in. I have no battery indication.
no brightness control either. Oops. I have a feeling the issue is this cable down here. You know, something about all these wires squished together. For some reason, that just doesn't work. I don't know what's going on. Jesus, that thing started coming unplugged again. God, that's so frustrating. Could be that I broke the ribbon cable. Or it might just need to be reseated. I could have also performed a grave miscalculation and wired everything backwards. I'm going to assume that's not it though, because I really don't want that to be it. It. That might be it. Well, I wanted to show off something cool, but apparently I can't even do that. Oh, I definitely broke the ribbon cable. It did not like to be bent the way I bent it. You can see this second to last pin Oh, it's glaring. That's broken. Oh. I mean, I have a whole bag of them, so it's not a tragedy, but... It's still frustrating. Okay. I need to redesign this portion or reposition. I don't really think there's much anywhere else I can put it though. See, this is this is why I can't organize my screws. I keep putting my screwdriver down. That keeps happening. Oh, you know why this happened with my uh, ribbon cable? Because things would have gone fine had I not put these rubber screw covers in. You never button things up until it's tested. Oh, I should turn my soldering iron off.
Oopsie doodle. Taping down the foam. Because I said I would do it next time I opened it. No, this one basically is taped down now. All right, so don't do this, I guess. All right, this is top facing. Uh, what did I do with my ribbons? They are right here. See, I have a whole bag. So this goes like that. If I could, like, feed this through this other ribbon. Oh. I could. I could just put it right there. I certainly left enough slack. No. We'll try it one more time this way. to try offsetting it just a little bit. What's one more bent ribbon cable? Feed that through.
12 pin because I thought it would be nice and easy to work with. That was apparently wishful thinking. Visually, I'm not really happy with how that looks with the uh, ribbon where it is. I would have liked to run that on the inside, but I'll take what I can get. Okay, there is a brand new ribbon cable. I wonder if it's... Hmm, probably not. I don't know how to hook this up. You know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to plug it in and test it and then worry about the wire routing later. on. Ooh, and that's on. Ta-da! And I bet I have brightness controls. Yep. Nice. I can't easily test the headphone jack right now, so I'm not going to worry about it. If the other two are working, then that's probably fine. And you know what? That can actually, that'll actually work. That doesn't have to get folded. Oh shoot, yeah it does, because it's in the way of the uh, shoulder button. Ugh. Hang on, I have an idea, I have an idea. it over a little bit.
Oh my goodness, yes. Did you forget I was here? Hi. Well, that is much more difficult to plug in. I kind of knew that was going to happen. Let's hope that's seated. I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, it is now. Oh, and that pushes it partially up into the uh, the cutaway for it. But now it's not in the way of anything. That's actually convenient. Really convenient. Oh, except that that's not seated. Ah, oh. It unseated the... Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's not supposed to happen. I definitely did not just drop the PCB. That is not what happened. So for those actually watching this video, kudos to you because this is a super long video. I can't imagine it's that act, you know, it's that interesting. You know, if you just have this on in the background, you know, cheers. I don't intend on doing another video on this ribbon cable thingy. Because the install, I think, is pretty self-explanatory. Alright, that looks better. It's looking better. And we have a screen now. Nice. We're in the uh, final stretch. I hope. God, I hope. I'm gonna put my buttons in now.
Alright, so it doesn't look as good as I was hoping, but it doesn't look terrible. That button's a little rough, but make it work. Yeah, obviously something is rubbing. I bet it's just a whole bunch of wires underneath the membrane. Whew! Almost there! Um, well, shoot, I guess I'm using the black buttons. I'm also guessing that that's not going to fit. That is not going to fit. We're going to have to file that. Oh. I think I just have to do the one side. I'm going to take yet another break and uh, figure out what I need to cut down for this wheel. Um, the original lower here, I have quite a bit shaved down on this side. I'm going to go reproduce that on this lower. Here we Wow, that was really quick, and for once I didn't cut too much. I just had to shave a little bit down on this side, and then I shaved these two supports down just a little bit. And... Look at that. Whew. All right. They're only, oh, there it is. All right. I'm always just terrified of over tightening these. Come on. those intrepid battery mod viewers. This should be uh, more details on this soon. Consider this a teaser. Slight panel gap, but... I think we're good. All of my buttons are working, including my brightness controls. So, test the game. knots on my headphones. Because I want to turn my headphones. Switching still works. And I don't know where the microphone is, but maybe you can hear that. 
Headphones are working. Last thing I have to do, besides reshell that other Game Boy. Oh god, this thing doesn't even close. What the hell happened? Okay, that is insanely disappointing. I think it's related to this. I think I need to file that out just a little bit more. Um, well, before I get to that, I'll do that off camera because this video has already just gone on way too long. I'm sure it'll bug someone to no end if I don't do this. Ta-da! And yeah, this thing absolutely needs a custom sticker at this point. I mean, it clearly goes. What the? F it's not getting stuck on anything. It just. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what the heck happened. I remember this thing closing all the way, both in this shell and with this Game Boy, but I don't know what happened. It feels so much better than it did. So that's nice. Yes, this D-pad really isn't that great. But it looks cool, so that's all that matters, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Alright, well, I'm going to play with it a little bit more, see if I can't get the fit just a little bit better, because as you can see, there's that panel gap that's higher on this side than on this side. So I think... Oh no, it's too late. I already cracked it. <sighs> oh man. Well, I did fuck that up. It was kind of expected. Ugh. Well, whatever, reshelling this thing going forward is going to be significantly easier now that I've got a, everything else figured out. Um, it's not how I wanted to end this video, but... I... I... I don't know. The, uh, the ribbon cable thingy, great success. Very pleased with how that's turned out. Could have been better, but, you know, it still works perfectly fine. Um, my, uh, engineering clearly has a ways to go because that is cracked yet again. It has been reshelled all of 20 minutes, but, uh, it's just, just the way she goes, I guess. Um, yeah, until next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.